Methiopropamine, or MPA, is a research chemical stimulant. It functions similarly to drugs like amphetamine, but because it lacks a phenyl group, it's not a phenethylamine or amphetamine. It's been used since 2010, and it's currently a pretty uncommon substance due to its prohibition in some countries and its lack of especially enjoyable effects. As with any drug, the most I can do is provide an outline of the typical effects. Your experience is not going to perfectly match the description I provide, since there are different ways people can respond to a drug. Among the positive effects are stimulation, mood enhancement, increased productivity, increased talkativeness, and physical euphoria. The negatives include anxiety, jitteriness, increased heart rate and blood pressure, sweating, jaw clenching, urinary retention, vasoconstriction, muscle tension, and dry mouth. Most descriptions of MPA are unenthusiastic, but if you take it with the understanding that it's best used for functional purposes, then it can be a fine substance. Those who report being disappointed are often trying to find an alternative to a more easily recreational drug like methamphetamine or the intactogens. That's not what MPA is best at providing. It's largely a functional stimulant with a near absence of euphoria. Your mood can improve and it can offer a sense of well being, but it's not the sort of substance people take just for the sake of feeling good. Like other stimulants, it increases your energy level, mental and physical work capacity, and it can make tasks more enjoyable. It can moderately boost motivation, making it easier to start tasks you'd otherwise put off. Because there can be a sensation of well-being and of being productive regardless of what you're doing, it's possible to feel like you're being more productive than you really are. If you want to get the most out of it, you still need need to exert self-control and utilize the energy for important tasks. Otherwise, you might get distracted by less useful activities. The stimulation itself usually isn't as strong as amphetamine or methamphetamine, but it's effective for overcoming tiredness and providing hours of wakefulness. Because it's pretty clear-headed, you tend to feel like you're functioning as well or better than usual. Though there are people who find it's actually harder to focus, they might have more motivation to start tasks, but they can't stick with them long enough, especially if they're doing cognitively demanding work. But overall, it's going to be neutral or positive for cognitive and work performance. There are some exceptions to this description. Taking very high doses or using it rectally or via inhalation can sometimes produce a more recreational experience. Very rarely, there are descriptions that make it sound a bit intactogenic or capable of rivaling classically euphoric stimulants. But because those responses are atypical and tend to come from riskier forms of use, I don't recommend chasing euphoria. It's more common to end up redosing and taking large amounts only to find you've received a lackluster experience and now have to deal with insomnia and a harsh come down. Despite not being recreational, it can still make you more talkative and promote socialization. For a minority of users, it'll do the opposite, however, by making them more prone to irritability during social interactions, so they're better off engaging in solitary activities. There are many reports of sexual effects like an increase in libido and orgasm enhancement. It's more common if you're using strong doses, but it can happen with common amounts. Though this is seen with a lot of stimulants, it might be somewhat more common than with amphetamine or methylphenidate. Compulsive redosing usually isn't an issue so long as you stick to taking it for functional purposes, and the chance is usually lowest when using it orally instead of through a faster route of administration. Because some people do take it through those routes and chase after euphoria, redosing can become problematic. Despite not being very pleasurable, a lot of users still encounter an urge to take more. Yet especially for the mood effects, the first dose is usually going to be the best, with every subsequent dose becoming less enjoyable. At common doses, a fair portion of users claim it produces less of a come down than amphetamine, and it's at least typically not worse than other stimulants. MPA tends to gradually wear off after the peak, rather than abruptly ending. Once the core effects have gone away, you mostly return to a state of sobriety. But those who are susceptible to come downs or who take large amounts can still experience hours and occasionally more than a day of negative after effects. Those include things like anxiety, restlessness, depression, irritability, and unpleasant persistent stimulation. Physical euphoria is more common than cognitive euphoria. There can 
be pleasurable, warm, and sometimes cold sensations around the body. A true rush of physical euphoria is more common with the non-oral routes of administration. It's not clear if the majority of users report these kinds of feelings. Cardiovascular stimulation and muscle tension are two fairly common properties that can make the drug uncomfortable. There might be a higher than usual incidence of chest pain, vasoconstriction, and palpitations. You should avoid high doses and intense exercise for the sake of reducing the occurrence of these issues. Difficulty urinating is also reported by a lot of users, more so with high doses, at which point it can become uncomfortable. The same goes for nausea, which seems to happen more often than with amphetamine. Often the nausea begins a couple hours after administration or during the come down. Vomiting has been known to occur in a minority of users. The preferred routes of administration seem to be oral and rectal. Oral is probably best for functional purposes since it's less likely to induce compulsive redosing and it has a better duration for productivity. Rectal might be the most enjoyable route in terms of maximizing whatever mood boosting and physically euphoric potential it has. Intranasal is a pretty ineffective route for many users and inhalation, though effective, has a short duration and a higher chance of pushing people to redose. Orally, it lasts four to six hours and has an onset of 20 to 45 minutes. Intranasally, it lasts two to four hours and has an onset of five to 15 minutes. When inhaled, the duration is two to four hours with an onset of under five minutes. And when taken rectally, it lasts three to five hours with an onset of 15 to 30 minutes. Some users report persistent wakefulness that at least produces insomnia for upwards of 10 hours after dosing. This is more common with large doses and redosing. MPA isn't a phenethylamine or amphetamine, distinguishing it from most of the common stimulants. Its ring structure is a thionyl group rather than a phenyl. Though this is a significant change, phenyl and thionyl moieties are bioisosteres, meaning one can often be used in place of the other without it fully altering a compound's biological activity, and that's true with MPA. It hasn't been heavily researched, but we know it at least functions as a reuptake inhibitor for dopamine and norepinephrine, with a negligible impact on serotonin levels. It could also be a releasing agent. The doses for each route of administration are listed on the screen. The common doses are those that seem to provide the primary desirable effects while reducing the chance of negative effects and safety issues. It's not a very euphoric drug, but some users still end up using hundreds of milligrams per session. Given this comes with greater safety concerns and problems like insomnia and a harsh come down, it's not wise to use the drug in that way. MPA synthesis was first reported in 1942. It was synthesized at the University of Michigan, and early pharmacological research at Park Davis showed it had a notable effect on blood pressure, supporting its role as an adrenergic substance. It wasn't until 2010 that the drug appeared on the market, and experience reports started to show up. Initially, there was a lot of interest in MPA being a methamphetamine alternative due to its structural similarity, but it quickly became clear that it didn't have the same consistent recreational potential. The EMC DDA first reported its presence in Europe in 2011, after Finland notified the EU about its detection. Authorities in the UK started issuing alerts about the drug in 2012, after it showed up in some fatalities alongside other drugs. Testing showed the drug was present in a wide range of legal high products in Europe, sometimes with it being marketed as synthocaine, leading people to think it would offer effects similar to cocaine. MPA MPA's use seems to have been greatest from 2012 to 2015. Once it was controlled in the UK in 2015, MPA's use reportedly declined, and even though it remains unscheduled in other countries, it's not a very popular substance. It's unscheduled in the US, but it could potentially be considered an illicit analog. MPA isn't controlled in Australia, could be considered an illicit analog in Canada, and is Class B in the UK. MPA is a research chemical whose safety has never been examined. Given the lack of information, it should be taken at common doses, infrequently, and without combinations. It has shown up in some fatalities and toxicity reports. Between those reports and its apparent pharmacology, stimulant toxicity and stimulant psychosis can almost certainly occur in susceptible people or when large amounts are used. Problems like increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, hyperthermia, paranoia, anxiety, 
and hallucinations are possible. To reduce your risk, you should minimize your dose and avoid sleep deprivation. Some of the risky combinations include other stimulants, psychedelics, and tramadol. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. The Drug Classroom is only funded by donations. This content is possible due to listener support. If you want to support, you can do so through Patreon, PayPal, or Bitcoin.